Hey, good morning. Today is July the 2nd, 2022. This is West Fryer in Oklahoma City. For one more month, we're about to head to North Carolina. Today I want to talk about one of my absolute favorite metaphors for understanding not only the information environment and landscape that we live in, but the choices that we make and the way in which information affects our minds and even our spirits and our souls. And that metaphor comes from a tour I took yesterday in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania of a U.S. Navy sub. And the metaphor involves a radar screen. Okay, so this picture right here <coughs> is a photograph of the radar screen on the USS Sequin which saw service in the United States Navy from the close of World War II in 1945 until 1968, which actually was the year that was right in the middle of the U.S. war in Southeast Asia, oftentimes called the Vietnam War. It was a long time. I am a fan of children's sermons because I think object lessons can really help. So what I want to do is think about this radar screen in the context of the submarine and the 90 sailors that were working and living on this submarine, on this ship under the water, and then apply that to our lives. So can you imagine, I've never, well, the only submarine I've been on is at Disneyland, right? Was it, you know, 20,000 leagues under the sea? So you go on this ride and you're able to go under the water and see things. And in that case, you've got wonderful windows. Guess what? There aren't any windows or portals to see outside on this U.S. Navy submarine. The only way that you see outside is to look through this digital screen. And you can, if, if you can see around the edge when it talks about the cursor and things like that, I mean, rudimentary controls, right? I mean, between 1945 and 1968, I'm sure the technology improved a lot, but still, you know, I was born in 1970, two years before I was born. <clears throat> That's like over 50 years ago, ladies and gentlemen. I'm an old guy. That technology today seems very primitive. So what we need to, we need to recognize several things about this screen. Number one, the representation that we see on the radar screens of our lives can represent re some of reality, but it's never a complete representation. It's always a partial representation. It literally is a window. Almost certainly you right now are watching this on a small portable screen, either a smartphone or a tablet. Maybe you're watching it on a computer. Could be a laptop or a desktop or a monitor. I don't know. Heck, maybe you're seeing it on a really big screen somewhere. That'd be kind of scary, maybe, <clears throat> for me. Not really, but anyway, you are seeing it on some kind of a screen. Maybe you have chosen to see this, or maybe not. Maybe someone is forcing you to watch this, you know, a, a relative or, or somebody at a meeting. But the point is, you are seeing a representation, and it's just a partial representation. And sometimes when we see things through that screen, we will assume that, we're seeing the entire picture, that we have all the information, and we, we rarely do. But <clears throat> I want to talk about the choices that we make in a word called protein. All right, so I'm not like an English guy. I do love writing. And I love video too, by the way. And I've learned that this word protein derives from, it's either Greek or Latin, I don't know which, probably Latin, um, word that basically it means can can be used in many different ways so this phone is a protein device i can use this phone right now in fact i usually do my wife is not here this morning and i did not start my day with a meditation and with bible reading and with with prayer and i'm going to do that right after i finish recording this in fact i'll tell you the series that we love to use is called pray as you go i'll put that link on here pray as you go is created by the jesuits of britain it is free you can download the app for your android or iphone um, and you can also just go to their website why is that important it's because i could could be and often do use this device i reach in to the phone and draw out ideas and words and concepts that I hope aspirationally are going to help me become more of the person I want to become. We become like the people we hang out with. 
we become like the ideas that we bring into our mind and we invite ourselves to marinate in. I'm a barbecue guy, right? I love to smoke brisket. In fact, I'm thinking about smoking some short ribs today. The second time, well, third time, I guess. I will have tried to cook those. Usually, you need to be marinating your your protein, whatever that is, it could be chicken or something else, but you generally marinate it, you let it seep in something, in salt, in some seasonings, in some olive oil, in you know water, in some kind of mixture, because it will take on the flavor of that marinade. So ideas, especially ones that we regularly bring into our mind, are like that. And so this metaphor of the radar screen is important because we can make choices about what it is we want to bring in and we can train the algorithms, which are today all around us on these different applications and the different websites that we use. And so rather than just sort of receiving in ignorance whatever happens to be shown to us on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube, on TikTok, or whatever the platform of the day is, we can shape that. You know, the longer that you watch a video, if you like that video, if you comment about that video, if you share that video, the social media company that hosts either directly that video or the link that you shared, all of that interaction for everyone is being tracked. That is part of an economy we live in today called the surveillance uh, economy. Well, it's called surveillance capitalism. I did a TED Talk, actually, about surveillance and digital citizenship. You can check it out. It's important to know this is happening. Why? Well, there's a lot of reasons. But in the context of what I'm talking about today, I think we want to take proactive control over the content which we're bringing into our minds, through our eyes and our ears, into our minds and literally even into our hearts and our spirits. I think we want to try and train the machine. And so I'm going to encourage you with intention to train the machine, the radar screen of your life by unfollowing people and organizations that are sharing content that you do not want to see more of by choosing to like, choosing to comment, choosing to follow, choosing to share content that you do like. Why? Because you're going to train the algorithm. You're going to teach Facebook or YouTube or Instagram or TikTok or whatever else, Twitter, whatever the next social media platform might be. You're going to train it the thing to to know what are the things that I want to see more of and what do I not want to see? This is important because we don't want to be sheep in this context, sort of blindly being led by whatever programmer has written the algorithm to a degree where when we choose to say yes to the acceptable use agreement and yeah, sure, I'm going to use Facebook. We agree to all these things, right? Which pretty much no one reads that fine print. But we still have some autonomy and ability to choose, and that involves teaching the algorithm. And back to this word protein, as my dogs have a fight here behind me. There's sneezing going on though, so we know it's friendly. What are we gonna choose to do with this screen and this device? We live in a seek and find world. And it's not just us as adults, young children. I'm amazed, right, at the dynamic of when kids get a phone. And oftentimes, man, they're getting a full-blown phone. It's not like, oh, here is the kid version, okay? Remember like bicycles and tricycles and big wheels and stuff like that? I mean, when kids were young, you didn't give them a full-blown like racing bike, a full-blown mountain bike, a thousand-dollar bike. You know, you you got some training wheels uh, on a bike if you had a bike, but you also oftentimes started <laughs> started your journey driving some kind of vehicle around your driveway in your neighborhood. You know, with a model that was made, it was custom made for kids. Okay, so my point is. These are conversations we not only need to have as adults, these are conversations that we need to be having regularly with kids, with students that we might teach if we're teachers, with our own children, with our grandchildren, maybe even our great-grandchildren. 
We need to have these conversations. The radar screen. What are you choosing today to bring into your mind to reach virtually out there into the internet and to bring in? I want to challenge and encourage all of us to find ideas and to find messages that help us aspirationally move towards becoming the people we want to become. And from a spiritual standpoint, as a follower of Jesus, I would encourage us all to pursue God's truth, to read God's word in the Holy Bible, and to pray for God's Holy Spirit to speak to us and to communicate with us. So let me close this with prayer because I have talked for a little over 10 minutes. Dear God, I thank you for this opportunity to be here this day. Lord, I do not know who is on the other side of this screen, but whoever that person is and wherever they are on their spiritual journey, God, I know that you know them. I know that you see them. And I know that when we seek you, you find us and you answer us. And so, Lord, I would just pray this day that we would seek your Holy Spirit, that we would seek your truth, and that, God, your Holy Spirit would move in us, would animate us, would fill us, so that we could share the fruits of your Holy Spirit, which we know are all good things. Your love, your kindness, your gentleness, your patience, your self-control, all of those things, which are the gifts of your Holy Spirit, God, I pray that they would become fruits of our lives and that as we think about these radar screens, these, these digital windows into the world, we would remember that it's only a partial snapshot of reality, but that we can exert some choice and that we would choose well amidst these protein choices and all this pollution, God, that we would choose to seek things that are good and pure and holy, and that we would bring those things into our minds, into our hearts, and into our lives, and that we would share those with other people. It's in your son Jesus' name that I pray, amen, and I hope you have a marvelous and blessed day. If you'd like to see more of these videos, I am creating a playlist on YouTube. You can go to wfriar.me slash sub, yeah, sub, for submarine sermons. You can also just go to westfriar.com slash after and find a veritable plethora of links that you can follow me in various places. But hey, I'm playing with media. I hope you will too. Have a great day.